Hello everyone. As you may or may not know, there have been sightings of strange, unexplainable lights in the night sky since about November of this year. I became aware of the news when publicity of these lights picked up around Lake and Heath Royal Air Force Base, located in the United Kingdom, starting from around November 20th, as reported by The Guardian. Because this is such a publicized event, the footage I've seen online is very disappointing with many examples just being misidentified aircraft. In this video, I'd like to first share some videos which I can definitively say are misidentified. Second, record example footage of known civilian airliners. Third, give tips on how to better identify and document aerial phenomena. And finally, share videos which I think are less explainable. I should probably introduce myself. My name is Nathan Bassett, and I am a working photographer who's been studying analog and digital imagery for about the past three years now. In addition, my father is a retired captain for American Airlines, and he was stationed at Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport, the third largest airport in the United States. I exist at a somewhat unique crossroads between imaging expertise and aviation knowledge, so I thought I'd try and use that to help understand what might be currently going on. So here we are at the southern end of Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport. I've come out here to discuss a couple of things, namely uh, the claims about noise, um, patterns, and light. So let's talk about noise uh, first. I've seen lots of videos where people use the evidence of, well, I can't hear a jet engine as a claim towards the fact that this is not an airliner. But hopefully, as you can discern from the plane just a few hundred feet behind me, uh, flying by in very close proximity, modern planes are just not that loud, at least not civilian ones. Uh, that's because they use a type of engine called a high bypass turbofan. The majority of thrust from these jet engines does not come from the core component itself. It comes from a large literal propeller that is attached to the front of the actual jet engine. This propeller produces most of the thrust and therefore it creates most of the noise, which is just whooshing wind. So it's not like a, a military plane where you have literally a majority of the thrust coming from the actual combustion of air uh, compressed in the engine. Instead on civilian airliners, it's just that fan spinning and you know, that's efficiency, weight savings. I'm sure there's a ton of reasons for that. But that means that the planes are quiet. And even in the videos that I've seen, if you actually listen to it with good headphones, you can actually still hear the distinctive howl as these uh, jet engines come in. Another thing is in a lot of the clips, the planes are coming in to land. And when you're coming to land, you're using minimal thrust. So again, that decreases the noise. So this video reportedly shows someone in New Jersey who spots what they immediately assume to be a drone. They pull out a pretty sizable flashlight or spotlight of some kind, and they decide to point it towards this thing. Now, just off the bat, nothing about this, this object in the sky tells me that it's anything other than a commercial airliner. If we take a look, see if I can pause it at the right time. There we go. Let's take a look at the lights. So you have the uh, tail illuminator. Uh, these are anti-collision lights. You'll have the green on the right side of the aircraft and the red on the left side. You have a white strobe on the rear tail. And then you also have strobe lights on the wingtips. And on the bottom of the fuselage, you're gonna have that uh, kind of iconic red one. That's called the beacon. Uh, whenever the aircraft is on the ground and the pilots decide to start up the engines, they have to turn on the beacon. Whenever you see that red flashing light, the ground crew know, hey, these engines are live and spinning don't go near them. So that's what that really indicates, and then they leave it on for the duration of the flight as just another anti-collision indicator. Uh, now, the more kind of strange lights that I think people question are these ones at the top of the aircraft, or the front, I should say. And due to the fact that this is a smartphone, you know, quality is, is dubious at best. So you see this weird shape at the front, and people are like, that does not look like an airplane. <laughs> the majority of it is dark and the front is being illuminated by, say it with me, landing lights. So aircraft have different types of landing lights that can be installed on the, the gear of the aircraft. 
what I believe is happening to this one in the clip is they are installed in the wing roots of the uh, of the aircraft. They're inside the wings and they're pointing forward. And when they're turned on, the spillage from these lights illuminates parts of the wing and uh, parts of the fuselage uh, in the farther up portion of the uh, aircraft. So this person asked, is it relevant that all the lights are blinking out of sync? Uh, I'm gonna put on screen some footage I recorded down at DFW airport. No, they're not in sync. They, I, they have no reason to be in sync. So here's the comments that kind of made me come back to this post. Uh, this person, for some reason, asks that, you know, uh, let's see, what is he replying to? So he's saying, r slash aviation is adamant that this is a plane. And he's asking, it's a plane with no jet sounds. I'm now going to replay the clip with the audio boosted. Uh, so hopefully you can hear at the very end of the clip when the jet is going directly overhead, you can hear the whine of these jet turbines. Second topic is patterns. So I've seen a clip where the uh, airplanes are organized in a certain pattern and you can see they move a little bit strangely. Uh, but I, when I saw that video, that's kind of where I got the idea for making this video here because I recognized the pattern. I've seen it before. I've been around this airport so much that I've seen that exact pattern here with my eyes. And that's the approach pattern for airliners. A, a plane doesn't just approach a giant airport like this uh, at random. They line up in a specific fashion and they descend at a certain rate and that creates a very distinctive pattern. This video here is about two minutes long so I'm not going to play the full thing. I will have these example videos downloaded and uploaded to my channel. I'll have those linked in the description as unlisted videos so you can go and watch the full thing. Uh, so this is a person in uh, supposedly in Manhattan. So that is downtown New York City. Uh, and they are looking at these interesting patterns of lights in the sky. And I will say that, you know, first glance, that is creepy looking. I would definitely take a glance at that and be like, dang. These are aircraft on final approach for LaGuardia Airport at New York City. So let's hop over to Flight Radar 24, which is a great tool for finding what's going on in the airspace above you. I currently have a filter enabled for aircraft only going uh, inbound, only going to land at LaGuardia Airport in New York City. If I disable that filter, you can see just how many planes are in the surrounding area. But we're going to focus on LaGuardia right now. And you can see just off the bat, they're flying over Manhattan, they're coming around, and they're lining up one after another behind each other and coming in to land at LaGuardia. Finally, to put this to bed, uh, if we put their footage side by side to what I filmed down at DFW uh, International, you can see that it's the exact same. Uh, of course, they're slightly different because I'm not in a 20 story high skyscraper or whatever, I'm on the ground, but you can see how the planes are lined up one after the other. Uh, and they are arranged in a similar sort of fashion. And then the final thing is light. That's kind of what this whole debacle is about, right? That's the one definitive thing people have seen is balls of light in the sky. Uh, there's been a few posts where people see a ball of light. They say, look at this sphere, this orb. Uh, look at how it transforms into an airplane throughout the course of the video. Um, and I, I saw that and I was like, wait, hold on a second. When you're driving your car at night and suddenly a car approaches you from the opposite lane and you're blinded by the headlights, you don't immediately assume that you're being abducted. As the car drives past you, the lights dim, you can see the rest of the vehicle. That's literally what's happening in those clips. As the aircraft changes direction or is descending in altitude, coming into land, you're blinded by the landing lights. Airliners have incredibly bright landing lights to eat through fog and actually put light on the ground as they're coming in from a very high altitude. So you're blinded by these lights and as they come into land, as they're you know, changing direction relative to you, you don't see the lights anymore and you start to see the rest of the aircraft. So nothing's changing, you're just getting out of the scope of these landing lights. This clip here is taken from a Facebook post that gained quite a bit of popularity. 
Um, I've sped it up here. The full thing is like 20 minutes. Once again, you can find that below this video. Uh, but I took out the main section, sped it up a little bit so we can get through this. Uh, so this individual stood outside their home for a while with their phone, looking at the sky and seeing all these um, orbs of light and the dialogue from the video, this individual is claiming that they're being chased or stalked by these orbs of light and that they are transforming into drones or planes or trying to mimic the look of a plane. Um, so yeah, what's happening here is she probably lives underneath uh, a flight path for an airport. As you can see, this is a suburban area. So she probably lives underneath a flight path and these are just planes that are coming and changing direction and she's no longer in the uh, spotlight of their landing lights. Another point I've seen made is that these cannot be airliners because they're seemingly changing colors in the video. Uh, that's just due to the fact that white is not a natural color. It's just the combination of all wavelengths of color. And because smartphone cameras are so tiny and really not suited for low light situations, uh, the different wavelengths of color reach the camera subpixels at different times. So the camera's kind of having to guess, okay, is it this, is it this shade? Is it green, red, blue, which combination of it? Uh, so that's why you see these slight alterations in color on very far away subjects. Okay, so we've looked at a few example videos. And like I said before in the beginning, the footage is really disappointing. And that's because they're shot with smartphones. So in this portion, we're going to talk about something that I really like. Camera gear. Now, I get it. Professional cameras are big, unwieldy, expensive, and they're also expensive which is why I recommend a website called Lens Rentals. They let you rent out camera bodies and lenses for a fraction of the cost of doing it by yourself or buying the equipment and reselling it. As for a suggestion on what to buy, I'd recommend maybe the Blackmagic Pocket 6K camera, the older version with the Canon EF mount. This will run you about $93 to rent it out for a week from Lens Rentals. And if you pair that with Canon's 70 to 200, you can get the version three for $77 for a week. Then you have a pretty good combo. Now, the Pocket 6K is what you call an APS-C or Super 35 camera. And you're gonna hear a lot of recommendations, including from myself, to get a full frame camera, since we're, you're probably gonna be shooting photo and video at night when there's very little light. But the uh, Pocket 6K has a feature called dual native ISO. You can bump it up to a higher ISO and it will actually reduce the noise because it has that uh, level built in. Uh, and then when you combine that with the 70 to 200, that gives you an equivalent reach of 112 to 320 millimeters. But if you're looking to drop some serious cash, there is a better alternative. I'd recommend the Sony Alpha A7S III. Now this also has dual native ISO, but it's a full frame sensor, giving you much better nighttime performance. It also has better quality of life features like built-in image stabilization if you're gonna be hand-holding or looking around and not using it on a tripod. As for lenses, you could go with a lot of different telephoto options. I just picked the uh, full frame 300 millimeter f2.8. Now this comes out to $522 before tax for renting it for a week, but if you're looking for answers, is any cost really not worth it? 